The summer of 2003 was probably the most important summer of my entire life. I was 12 and had nothing better to do than shoot free throws at my neighbor's basketball hoop, eat Red Baron pizza, watch Adult Swim, and of course, play CS 1.6. Maybe sad to some, but nestling into a dark room with the glow of a screen in a sweaty basement, going deep into the AMs playing CS were arguably the most impactful moments of my entire life. At this time, I was definitely behind the curve on reading comprehension, and CS brought me up to speed because I wanted to read all the shit talk and chat. It taught me some social skills and gave me perspective on adulthood. Maybe some street smarts too, with the servers I'd hang out in. Getting perspectives on people from different states and lifestyles. And I learned about women through custom sprays players would use. Eye opening. CS was amazing. Spent a lot of time playing it. Became a part of me, like a phantom limb. So, in the summer of 2003, I had a friend whose house I'd go over to and land with. They had a nice little ThinkPad laptop and an Alienware desktop machine. I'd go over there and we'd spend weekends doing 1v1s on custom maps like CS Bikini and blah. My buddy one day said, hey, we can make maps too, you know. All you have to do is download this software called Valve Hammer Editor. So, one night, that's exactly what we did. We downloaded the software on both the laptop and the Alienware and started experimenting with it. I couldn't figure it out, so I just watched him as he crafted a waterfall and some mushy ground around it. We had absolutely no idea how it worked. But, little did I know, this was a profound moment for me. Level design was going to stay in my blood for years to come. I wanted to try this out at home, so I had him come over and help me configure the software to work. I was a dumb and lazy kid, so getting this thing to work on my own was never going to happen without help. Sure enough, he got it configured, and I started working on my first map ever, D.E. Malagio. Now what a bizarre level to behold. A big desert town with a lot of empty space, only a few buildings to populate the level. Designing this was like playing The Sims, but with more control. It felt so cool being able to create any object I wanted to with these blocks. My favorite part is the beanstalk that you can KZ climb up to the clouds. Little design pieces like this are really special to me, and every time I look back at this map, I go into the headspace where Counter-Strike 1.6 was very alive and thriving. I remember hyping myself up thinking I could upload this map and anyone around the world could experience it. Mind-blowing! I started really getting into it after I joined the infamous Joda 2 forums, where the famous Nipper hung out. If you're unfamiliar with him, his maps were all over CS 1.6 back in the day. He made over a hundred different maps for the game. Truly inspiring, and I guarantee if you played CS during this time, you've likely encountered one of his maps. So, being inspired by his levels, and being a regular at the Rocks Hideout 4 server that strictly hosted Nipper maps, I had to do it too. I had to become a level designer of class and caliber like Nipper. High school rolled around, and I started getting better. Understanding the limits of the engine, how different compiling tools affected the map, how to use skyboxes, the power and finesse of sprites and sounds that can change the feel of a map. Feeling confident around 2004-2005, I decided to create the house I lived in. This process took ages, but I wanted to create a level on par with Xmas Nipper House, one of the most beloved maps to ever grace CS 1.6. The chilly, insular home overlooked by blizzardy mountains. The attic full of retro gifts that make any young kid excited on Xmas Day. The drivable Santa sleigh countless people used to assault the house. It was a perfect level. I had to make my own. So I got started on my house map. I slaved over this map for months. I made custom textures for it with Wally -E and a pirated version of Photoshop 7.0 until one day, it was complete. The CTs start at the top of the map in the hills with transparent trees for cover. The T's started at the bottom of the house where they would assault the home, planting a bomb at the Xmas tree, just how it was in Xmas Nipper House. The quiet, unassuming home lit up in the dead of night with blue snow-covered hills, just waiting to be assaulted. I had a circle of friends that I got into CS 1.6, and we'd spend every evening for months congregating on my dedicated server, just grinding out round after round on that level. This map was played so often by us that it entered the CS 1.6 zeitgeist and ended up on other people's servers. I was shocked by this. The original endeavor was just to make a map that was an ode to Nipper and to destroy my friends in my own house map level. When I started seeing the level pop up in the master list, I felt famous. Like I had some influence in the game, that I was truly changing the landscape of the game with this level. I became a one-hit wonder in CS, and I truly couldn't have asked for anything more. My friends even noticed this too. It was truly an accomplishing time for a young man. Having something you've crafted, a piece of art like that, that people cared enough to experience on their own outside of your presence. I can't even describe how cool that felt, and how cool it still feels knowing that something I've made lives on in servers still to this day. That I've imprinted memories on those who've interacted with my level during that time. 
I fell in and out of mapping for the game as newer games came out and I was getting older, more involved with life and chasing girls. But the fervor was still there, and when the mapping bug hit me, I dug in. In the 2010s, I started mapping with even greater attention to detail with a young adult mind. Didn't hold back this time for creating opuses in my mind. I fell in love with rat style maps. I love this idea of being tiny and doing battle in all sorts of scenarios where the world around you is much larger. Think Sarge's Heroes or that one level in Super Mario 64. I just love the concept of perspective bending like that. So I replicated a map from scratch from another game that I love, Soldier of Fortune 2. The map being titled Big Freakin' House. This map was many months of intensive labor. I'd sleep as little as four hours a night because I was so dedicated to creating the perfect level. It turned out great. Although too big and one too many nooks and crannies for a round based game like CS, it would have been a great deathmatch map. Hindsight is 2020. Around the same time, I made another map replicating the RV from Anchorman. This one was a crazy endeavor. I don't have much to say about it. I just wanted to make it. My favorite map I've ever designed is an emulation of the classic arcade game Rampage. I ripped a bunch of textures from the game and painstakingly made them into wad textures for the level. All the buildings are destructible. I compiled it many times with different game types for it. We landed on a KA knife arena style which suited the pace of it really well. Oh, and did I mention you can climb the destructible buildings too? That's a little trick I'll have to tell you about another time. It was kind of silly in hindsight designing levels for a game that's slowly dying. I mean the game is still alive, but most of the North American crowd that I used to play with in the early 2000s moved on to newer renditions of the CS franchise. I just loved 1.6, feels so good to me, and I love it. Couldn't move forward to later versions of the game. Source always looks so ugly to me, the engine's lighting washed everything out, the physics don't feel as quakey, and I was never as beastly in CZ, Source, or Go like I was in 1.6. I truly dominated 1.6 and couldn't give up that skill to start over in a different game. And when you design a level and decimate people in it, wow, that feeling is truly powerful. As my beloved CS 1.6 shrinks in player size, I still reflect fondly on the memories of my levels and the impact it had on the community at the time. I do wish games would come out with dev tools so that the community can get inspired from one another with their creations again. It also provides some sense of longevity to the game because people have a vested interest in having their creations explored and played on for years to come. Sadly, I don't see that happening. 